rounding decimal numbers with me, Catherine. Before we can start rounding, we need to review the place values. What I like to do is actually put the number on top of my place value words until I get really good at it. You do need to memorize these, so don't think you can just have a place value chart during your test. So let's see, what number is in the ones column? Well, that's the four, of course. What number is in the tens column? That's the three. What number is in the hundreds column? Well, that's two. What number is in the tenths column? Remember, anything with THS is after the decimal. It's to the right of the decimal. And that's my eight. And finally, what number is in the hundredths column? Right, that's the nine. Do you remember how to pronounce this number? 234 and 89 hundredths. Awesome! Let's review the rounding rules. The rounding rules are exactly the same as when we rounded whole numbers. The first thing we do is underline the place to be rounded. For example, if the question asks to round to the nearest tenths place, you underline the number in the tenths place. The next thing we do is look at the number to the right of the one you just underlined. Basically, we look next door. If that number is five or larger, we add one to the underlined number. If the number next door is four or smaller, we leave the underlined number alone. Finally, we change all the numbers to the right of the underlined number to zeros, or we just take them all off. Let's try one together. Let's round this number to the nearest thousandths. The first thing I like to do is write my number. For some of you, you may need to write it over your place values, and that's okay. Remember, the first thing we're going to do is underline the thousandths place, because we want to find to the nearest thousandths. So four is my thousandths place. I look to the number to the right, or I look to the number next door. Now I have to make a decision. Is the number next door five or larger? Well, then I'm going to round up the underlying number. If it's four or smaller, I'm going to leave the underlying number alone. So let's look at our answer. You're going to notice that I added one to my four, and I have a five. Then everything after the number over here is deleted, or you could put zeros there, but it's not necessary. How would we say this number in English? We would say 16 and 985 thousandths. Awesome! Let's look at another example. We want to round this number to the nearest hundredths. If you're still a little shaky about which number is in the hundredths place, be sure to use the place values. But remember, you need to have them memorized. What do we do first? Well, the question asks us to round to the nearest hundredths place. Where exactly is the hundredths place? That's the six. I'm going to underline my six. The next thing I need to do is look at the number to the right, or look next door. If that number is five or larger, I'm going to round up the underlined number by one. If the number next door is four or smaller, I'm going to leave it alone. In this case, it is five or larger, because we're looking at the seven. Seven is larger than five. That means we're going to round the underlined number up by one. What's that going to look like? 101 and 27 hundredths. Awesome! Hopefully you notice that I don't have anything after the seven. Here's one for you to try. You're going to pause the lesson, round, then press play to check. Let's look at this one together. The first thing I like to do is rewrite my number. If you're not really good at this yet, you can use the place value chart. But remember, you need to memorize it. 
In my question, it asks to round to the nearest tenths place. Which number is that? It's the two. So I need to underline the two because that's the number I'm going to round. I look to the number to the right and I have to make a decision. I'm looking at the number one. Is one five or larger? I'm gonna round up. If one is four or smaller, I'm gonna leave it alone. Well, hopefully we all know that one is smaller than four. Now our decision to round the underlying number tells us we're gonna leave it alone. We're gonna leave it at a two. How do I pronounce this number? A seven and two tenths. Notice that I took everything out after the two. Here's another one for you to practice. You're gonna round the gas price to the nearest hundredths place. Pause the lesson, round, then press play to check. Let's see how you did. As you figured out, I like to write the number first. Then I need to find the hundredths place. If you're still not sure which is the hundredths place, you can always use the place value chart. Now remember, not all instructors let you use the place value chart during a test, so make sure to ask. In this case, we want to round to the nearest hundredths. Hopefully, you can see that eight is in the hundredths place. So I'm going to underline it. Next, we look to the number next door. Remember, we have to ask ourselves two questions. Is the number next door, or nine, five or larger? Then we round up. If it's four or smaller, we're going to leave it alone. But in this case, hopefully everyone can see that nine is five or larger. So we're gonna be rounding up. Remember, we only round the underlying number. So what's our answer gonna be? $30.39. And hopefully, you see, I took all the other numbers out. Awesome. Let's look at another example. We're gonna round the price of $28.63 to the nearest dollar. Let's write it out like I like to do. Now we need to underline the dollar place. So let's put that in my place value. The dollar place is the same thing as the ones place. If I asked you for $2, you would give me two ones. That's the ones place. So in this case, the eight is actually my dollar. How about after the decimal? Well, we have tenths. And if we think of money, tenths is a dime. And how about the hundredths? Those are my pennies. So let's look back at our question. I want to round it to the nearest dollar. That means eight is in the dollar spot. I'm going to underline the eight, look next door, and we have a decision to make. Is six five or larger? Then we're going to round up. If six is four or smaller, we're going to leave it alone. In this case, Hopefully we can see that six is five or larger. So now we have to round up the underlined number. What is $28.63 rounded up to the nearest dollar? Yeah, $29. You're gonna notice that I kept the zeros here. We keep the zeros because we're talking about money, $29. Ooh, the IRS. Did you know the IRS actually explains how to round money? Yeah, you can round off cents to the whole dollar on your return and schedules. To round, drop amounts under 50 cents and increase amounts from 50 cents to 99 cents to the next dollar. First of all, I'm the host, I'm an instructor, I'm, I'm not a tax advisor, so so if the IRS starts knocking on your door because you rounded wrong, don't say, oh, my math instructor, blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. I'm just telling you what it says. Let's look at an example. $24.75. We want to round it to the nearest dollar. What number would that be? Yeah, it's four. I look to the number next door. Since seven is five or larger, Rounding to the nearest dollar would be $25. 
What if I want to round it to the nearest penny or cent? I'm going to underline that number, which happens to be the five, and I look next door. Remember, if the number next door is four or smaller, we leave the underlined number alone. Rounding to the nearest cent is $24.75. Let's look at this one. Once again, we're rounding to the nearest dollar. Hopefully you see that eight is in the dollar place. I look to the number next door. It's a four. Four is four or smaller. That tells me that I leave the underlying number alone. Rounding to the nearest dollar is $128. What if I'm going to round to the nearest cent or the nearest penny? Well, first we have to underline the penny spot, which is the five. We look next door, which is a six. Since six is five or larger, I'm going to round up the underlying number. When I round to the nearest cent or penny, we have $128.46. Here's a couple for you to try. You're going to pause the lesson, round, and then press play to check. All right, let's see how you did. $68.39 rounded to the nearest dollar. Well, we underline the eight, we look to the number next door, and we get $68. Why? Because three is four or smaller. Let's look at the next number. I need to round this one to the nearest cent or penny. That would be the nine. I look to the number next door, and what'd you get? Sure, $68.39. Why is it 39 cents? Because the number next door is a three, and three is smaller than four. Let's look at the next one. The first thing I do is underline the dollar. Then I look to the neighbor next door. We have a five. Well, five is five or larger. So we're gonna add one to the underlying number. Did you get $240? That's right. Our underlying number is a nine. Nine plus one is 10, and that made a 40. Cool. Let's look at our last one. We're gonna round this one to the nearest cent or penny. I underline the penny. I look to the number next door. Now I have to make a decision. Well, seven is five or larger. So I'm gonna add one to the underlying number. Did you get $239.56? Yay. Let's look at this example. The fishmonger has his prices for fresh halibut at $6.99 a pound. Let's round it to the nearest dollar so we can figure out how much to buy with $25. First thing is, a fishmonger is a person or a store that sells fish or food. Cool. First, we need to round up $6.99. I'm gonna write my number just in case. I'm putting the place values here, putting my number in there. Remember, you need to memorize this part. The dollar is the six, so I've underlined the six. I look next door and I see a nine. Hopefully, we can remember that nine is five or larger, so I'm gonna round up. This ends up being $7. Some of you might be a little confused, so let's talk about this for a second. The nine tells me I'm gonna round the underlying number up, and then everything behind it becomes a zero. That's how we ended up with $7. We keep the zeros because we're talking about money. That's super important. Now that we figured out it's approximately $7 a pound, we need to figure out how many pounds of halibut, mmm, the good stuff, can we buy with $25? What do you think we'll do? Yeah, I know. These cute little fish aren't halibut, but they're so cute, right? I mean, I had to put it in there. Have you guessed what we're gonna do? Yep, we're gonna divide. How many sevens are in 25? Well, I know that three times seven is 21. When I subtract, I end up with four. Now we have to answer the question. How many pounds of halibut can we buy with $25? Well, we can buy three pounds of halibut with some change left over, like for a soda or something. As long as we're talking about money,
let's talk about money that goes out to the thousands place. That means three decimal places. Have you noticed that gas prices are written to the thousands place? What do gas prices end in nine tenths of a cent? To answer that question, I'm going to give you a little assignment. You're going to go to Marketplace with Kai Rizdal. I love Kai. Anyway, if you put this into your browser, you're going to get a whole awesome explanation why gas prices are to the nearest nine tenths. So let's do some examples. Round the regular gas to the nearest cent. Regular gas is $1.899. Thousands. We underline this cent place. We look to the number next door. What do we get? One dollar ninety cents. Yeah. Now, if you charged it, what would happen? Well, you won't find tenths of a cent on your credit card bill, or even at the pump. But if you buy fifteen gallons of gas at three dollars and two hundred ninety-nine thousandths, you're paying thirteen cents more. Than just at three dollars and twenty-nine cents, since Americans buy one hundred seventy-eight million gallons of gas a day, that's a half a billion dollars more per year. And I got this little tidbit from Marketplace too. Maybe that seems a little confusing, so let me give you an example. How much is charged on your credit card for ten gallons of gas? Let's say we're going to take the original amount of regular gas and times it by ten. I know that we haven't talked about multiplying decimals yet, so I'm just going to give it to you. Ten gallons of gas at the regular price would be eighteen dollars and ninety-nine cents. But what if it was only one dollar and eighty-nine cents, and I'm still buying the same ten gallons of gas? What would it be? Eighteen dollars and ninety cents. Yeah, the nine cents, the nine pennies, the nine. Yeah. The nine thousandths really adds up after a while. That's what Kai Rizdal is talking about. When we have 180 million gallons of gas a day being pumped, and just think, nine cents out of ten gallons well, goes right to the company. So what do you think of that? Yeah, interesting. Now it's your turn to practice. We're going to pause the lesson and round, then press play to check. First of all, what are we looking at? What are we looking at? Well, this is the NASDAQ, National Association of Securities Dealers Automated Quotations. It began trading on February eighth, nineteen seventy-one. If you want to know more about the American Stock Exchange, check out the web link here. Let's look at the first one, just so I can get you started. American Airlines is selling for forty-six dollars and ninety-one cents. If I round it to the nearest dollar, it's going to be forty-seven dollars. How did I do that? Here's my dollar. I look to the number next door. Since it's five or larger, I add one to this number. All right. Now you can do the rest of them. You're going to pause, do them, and then press play to check. Let's see how you did. Apple is one hundred thirty-six dollars. Adobe one hundred twenty dollars. Analog eighty-two dollars, automated data processing one hundred dollars, Autodesk eighty-six dollars, Takami Technology sixty-two dollars, and some pharmaceutical one hundred twenty-nine, Applied Materials thirty-six dollars, Amgen I think that's how you pronounce it is one hundred seventy-three dollars, and finally Amazon is eight hundred forty-five dollars. Cool. All right, this is the self quiz. You're gonna pause the lesson, round, and then press play to check. Okay, let's see how you did. The first one rounded to the nearest hundredths. Hopefully, you get twenty-five and eighty-four hundredths. Number two asks you to round to the nearest ten thousandths. Yep. One and two thousand seven hundred fifty-eight ten thousandths. Ah. And the last one asks to round to the nearest dollar. Hopefully, you get thirty-six dollars. Great. 
I'd like to thank you for hanging out with me on this video. If you like it, why don't you pin me to Pinterest? I give you the directions right there. Did you happen to know that I have video guides and worksheets for all of my videos? Oh my goodness, yes! You can find them on Teachers Pay Teachers. Make sure to subscribe so you won't miss the new videos. Do you have a request? Let me know at piecrustable at gmail.com or in this YouTube comment box below.